start our visit outside of town to the west, kind of southwest of town here. It's not easy to see what this is, but these berms and ditch that I'm standing in form part of an Iron Age defensive network around the old Celtic Iron Age settlement of Camelodunum that forms the, kind of the historical foundation of what's known as England's oldest town. Welcome to Colchester. So most of our trip this weekend was planned using this, Benham's Colchester, A History and Guide, printed in 1946. It's a nice, thorough little history. It's got lots of illustrations, photographs, drawings, and uh, quite a bit of primary source material with little editorial caveats throughout. It's a great little reference. So the Celtic defenses that we visited were built at a time when the Romans had already conquered most of Western Europe. The locals knew about it, traded with them, and they probably had a sense of what was coming. So I've brought you here to the Roman walls that surround part of modern day Colchester to tell you the story of the Seni Revolution and of Boudicca. So around 60 AD, the Romans lived here in, they had established a colony here in Colchester. They'd only been here for about 20 years or so. And they had alliances, which were apparently pretty tenuous with some of the nearby Celtic tribes. And it was around this time in AD 60 when the king of the, the Seni tribe died. The king had apparently worked out an arrangement where he would give control of the tribe to the Romans upon his death, and he did this to protect his family. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and after he died, the Romans abused his wife, Boudicca, and their daughters. In response, she led a massive revolution against the Romans with an army of, of Aseni and allied Celtic tribes. She came, stormed Colchester, burned the city to the ground, and killed essentially everyone in it. Carried on, did the same thing in the, at the time, new town of Londonium and a couple others before she was finally stopped. She killed thousands and thousands of Romans and their allies. Afterwards, the Romans built these walls. The destruction that Boudicca wrought during the Iseni revolt was so complete that there's an archeologically visible layer of debris, burning, and destruction present throughout pretty much all of Colchester. In the museum, they actually have a little display of artifacts burned and destroyed from that layer. So after their empire collapsed and the Romans finally slowly left Colchester, the area was occupied primarily by Saxons, although they suffered frequent Viking raids. The whole area was conquered by the Vikings in the 9th century, reclaimed by the Saxons in the 10th. But there's lots of Saxon architecture and structures still present in town, including this doorway right here, which looks like it's made out of Roman brick, probably is, dates back to Saxon times, as does the whole tower that it's connected to. Of course, the seminal invasion in English history was when the Normans came in 1066, when William the Conqueror came and took over everything. Vikings continued to attack, and there was at least one siege on Colchester after that invasion. However, the Normans managed to hold the town. So this is St. Botolph's Priory. It's a Norman, it's ruins of a Norman church. It was built in the 12th century. I like this particular view because it has a very well-preserved, classically Norman arch right behind me. I always like seeing these when we travel around. They're indicative typically of a particularly old church. And this one's big and ornate and really cool. Behind me is Colchester Castle, built in the 11th century. It is the largest Norman keep in all of England, bigger even than the Tower of London. It is that big because it was built on top of a Roman temple from which a bunch of the building materials were also probably harvested. You'll notice that it includes a whole lot of those same bricks that we saw earlier at the Priory. Inside, now it's a museum. Colchester weathered any number of small battles and wars during the medieval period, along with several plagues. There's a number of buildings in town that still date back from that period. The George, the Red Lion Hotel, and of course the Rose and Crown Hotel, where we're staying. 
Serious violence flared again in 1648 during the English Civil War when the town was occupied by a royalist army and then it promptly fell under siege by the parliamentarian army. The siege took a couple months. There was incredible violence. The town people were, were starving. They were eating candles to stay alive. Uh, and finally, when it was all over and the royalists surrendered, the parliamentarian army fined the town for their impudence. To this day, you can see bullet holes at the siege house on East Street, which is now a nice little French restaurant. Where we just had lunch, and it was delicious. Entirely unlike eating candles not to, serve, not to starve. So we took a little break from our history exploring of Colchester to look at first site, the building right behind me, which is kind of a combination art museum, uh, movie theater, various other things, meeting space. One of the uh, exhibits they have inside right now allows visitors to make their own drawings and clip them up on the wall right with all the other art.